Hi, uh, my name is Alexandria Sampson, and today is my 20th birthday. I'm sure I'll be receiving lots of happy birthday wishes from friends, family, and even some people that I hardly ever speak to. The truth is, though, that for me, this birthday has mixed feelings, and I definitely didn't feel happy about it for the past few months leading up to this day. I've actually been dreading it. Today, instead of keeping to myself how I feel about turning 20, I want to share with everyone exactly how this day makes me feel and why it's been a great source of anxiety for me. Some of you watching this video will understand what I've gone through and some people will be made uncomfortable by my language and the story that I'm going to tell. Some people will even recognize themselves in parts of my experience and most will have no idea that this has been my life. So, first off, I have depression. Secondly, I am not my mental illness. I am much more than that. Although it has played a part in shaping who I am today and has affected my life, as well as the way that I see the world, it doesn't define me. I began to realize that I had depression around the age of 13, when I was in eighth grade. The combination of being bullied at school, feeling isolated and alone at home, and even when people were around, and the pressure that I've always put on myself to be perfect and portray myself really well, um, it really threw me for a loop. I didn't have any friends nearby, and my family was really busy uh, with extracurriculars and work, and I just really felt lost and alone. I found myself reading constantly to escape, uh, listening to music that shared my angers with the world, um, trying to get away from my reality to live through the eyes of characters on a page. Um, I started writing poetry and releasing my frustrations through pen and paper. Uh, I only ever shared my darkest feelings with one best friend who lived hours away. Those feelings were leading me towards a daily struggle with depression, anxiety, and a battle with suicidal th thoughts. Um, I thought of myself as an artist, painting a picture of happiness on my face in my actions, my expressions, my body language, so that people closest to me wouldn't know what I was going through. I didn't want them to see how quote-unquote weak I was. Uh, I didn't want to concern them or have them focus their attention on me. I truly believed that I was already a big enough problem and that I should just try to work through my issues myself because otherwise I'd simply be burdening them with my complaints. I changed schools when I went into ninth grade, and there things began to look up. I had my first relationships, found some wonderful friends, enjoyed being at that school, I liked my teachers and my classes better, and I felt more as though I fit in. I no longer had to sit in the hallway and eat my lunch alone, um, and even the bad days didn't see so, seem so horrible for a while. Eventually, it all caught back up with me though. That's what depression does. At some point in the year, the suicidal thoughts resurfaced and the depression seemed to overcome me like never before. Even though I had good friends, a supportive family, and a loving boyfriend at the time, I was distressed in my depression. I continued to spend a lot of time alone at home, just sitting in my room for hours reading or even just browsing the internet. I didn't want anybody's help. I didn't even want to get better. Uh, I was content in my misery, if that makes sense, and I felt as though I was hopeless and things would never get better. I had plans of suicide, and I was in a really, really dark place. Then, in the summer after my grade 10 year, things got really bad. So I hit my lowest point, and I needed someone to talk to who I felt would understand what I was going through. I contacted someone I trusted to talk about my mental health and asked them to keep it a secret, even though what I was telling them was extremely alarming. They immediately called my parents, who reacted really strongly to the news that their daughter was thinking about killing herself. Um, I felt betrayed and as though I was being attacked. I was no longer allowed to be home alone and I was being asked questions that I didn't always have the answers to. And whenever I tried to explain myself, I felt as though nobody understood the words coming out of my mouth. I was even angrier with the world at that point, and 
Although my parents brought me to one psychologist after the next, after lots of counseling se sessions, um, these professionals were definitely not helpful to me. Uh, I didn't even want their help, so it was really hard for me to try to let them in. I found myself sitting in chairs, listening to some adults complain about their own lives instead of listening to me talk about my own, and um, I didn't want this help. And even when my parents brought me to the doctor, the first reaction was just to put me on antidepressants, which I refused. And in that moment, I made an oath to myself that I would never take drugs for my depression. I knew that they weren't for me, and I felt as though because my depression came from the actions of people around me and the situations I'd been in, that I wanted to get better without chemicals. As my high school years progressed, the stress continued to accumulate and the work kept getting harder. I've always been a perfectionist and spent hours on hours doing homework. I would also sign up for every committee, and I was so involved at school, which meant that every moment was a bundle of stress. Even though it took my mind off of my depression, it made it worse at the same time. One of the ways that I was able to get through it was with the support of my family. Although I was extremely angry with them for having found out my secret of mental illness, I was really grateful for their patience. I had many outbursts of emotion towards them where I demanded to be heard, days where I was angry at the world and I would shout at them, days that I refused to say a word, and many picked fights that I'm not proud of. It was really hard to control my emotions and actions during those times, but still, my family put up with me and did their very best to help me through it all. As I made it to the end of my grade 12 year, the accumulation of stress came about again. I knew that with exams on the rise, I wouldn't be able to get through them without some extra help. So one morning, I remember coming out of my room and going upstairs into the kitchen and asked my parents to speak with me. I told them that I couldn't help how I felt and couldn't handle the end of the year on my own. I was unmotivated to do any work or studying and I was feeling really overwhelmed and suicidal and I wanted them to bring me to the hospital to talk to someone because I felt as though I was scaring myself. After they contacted someone who knew the procedure they should take, they both called into work to take the day off and brought me to the hospital. I felt really nervous and scared and we sat in the waiting area for I think hours, and as the time passed, my stomach filled with butterflies, and I kept thinking that we sh should just leave before I had to tell another stranger what for what seemed like the hundredth time my entire story and explain to them my situation. When we got into the triage and the nurse was taking my vitals, she asked me why I was there, and I couldn't answer her. The words just couldn't come to my lips because I was so scared to say the wrong thing. I, at the same time as not being able to say anything, wanted to scream at her because I want to kill myself. But instead, tears just filled my eyes and I mumbled nervously asking for my parents to come in. And finally, for the first time, I really felt relief that they were there for me. All along, I'd been fighting their aid and in that moment, I couldn't have been more grateful to have them by my side. They explained my situation, and then I was moved to another waiting room, and finally the room where I would see a psychologist. This part is where everything becomes a little bit of a blur. So I know that I had to, once again, repeat my story of having been bullied, feelings of isolation, stress, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, um, and I was also asked if a student doing their work placement could come in and observe, which made me feel really uncomfortable. I know that I had the choice to refuse, but at that point my decisions were unclear and questions were being answered without any real analysis process. Uh, I just wanted to help I just wanted help and uh, would agree to anything that they wanted me to do as long as I could feel better. Um, the student looked at me with pity all over their face and made me feel kind of ashamed, and I tried to ignore that they were there. After what felt like an interrogation, I was asked if I was willing to speak to a psychiatrist, to which I passively agreed. 
At that point, it didn't register with me that people only see a psychiatrist if they're willing to try medication. Uh, she came in and, after peppering me with the same questions again, proceeded to prescribe me two antidepressants. She didn't ask me whether I wanted them or not, and she didn't talk to me really about side effects. She just gave them to me and didn't really take into consideration that my final exams were the next week. So when I left, I was upset with the pills that I'd been described, prescribed. Uh, I didn't want to take them, and I was confused. I was wondering, is this the only way to get better? After taking the pills for a week, my family and I decided that I ought to be taken to the doctor again because things didn't seem right. I wasn't able to attend school because I was sleepy all the time. My words were slurred and I couldn't even make sense of the simplest things. Needless to say, the pills prescribed to me were too much for my body to handle and it had the effects of an overdose. So I stopped taking the pills and to this day have never taken any medication since. Over the summer, I saw a psychologist at a hospital every few weeks, and in September, when I moved away to university, I started seeing a psychologist right away through the university's counseling services. I was, and still am, extremely happy with, the univers with my university choice. I made some amazing friends, and I really couldn't have picked a better program for me. And I felt free in the independence that I had from moving away from home. My psychologist was newly out of school and worked completely by the book with me, helping me to build the skills that I needed to live a less stressful and anxious life and try to eliminate the majority of my negative thoughts. Since then, I've had a psychologist who was not the right fit for me and then another who was and still is. In January of 2015, I felt as though I had progressed enough that I didn't want to rely on my psych appointments anymore and I haven't gone back since, which is really great, but I still know that she's there for me if I ever need her. So this doesn't mean that I don't have good days as well as bad days, but some of the things that helped me to become a healthier person were my change in environment, my willingness to allow people to help me, um, eliminating the cycle of negative self-talk, taking more positive risks and adventures, speaking to people about my feelings, spending as much time outdoors as possible, learning to just let go of things that bother me, uh, surrounding myself with amazing and positive people, and always allowing myself the time to be sad, and accepting my feelings as momentary and not all-consuming. Back when I was 13 years old, I told myself repeatedly that because I was suicidal, I would never become an adult. For me, becoming an adult was 20 years old. Today represents a goal that I've achieved. It's a day that I thought depression would take away from me. Turning 20 is kind of scary for me because all these years I believed that that little girl who was scared, lost, and alone was, was right. I, I thought that she had some insight into my future but today I see that and that little girl sees that I am much stronger than that. Um, I've overcome the person that I used to be and all the hurdles that it took to do so but I didn't do it alone and I don't plan on spending the rest of my life trying to carry all the weight of my struggles alone either. Life is so much easier when you let people in and help each other. I'm so grateful for my friends and family who've been there for me through all of those times, the good and the bad. And I still think that I am an artist, but now I clear away all the negative to see the good lying under the layers of paint we put on every day. I hope that this video can help people to understand what it feels like to struggle with depression. And I also want you to know that if you ever need someone to help, you have all kinds of people and you don't even know it, including me. Thanks for watching and good luck to anyone else battling with their own mental illness.